Ah, the philosophy strand. A nice relaxing subject about poetry and philosophers. But last semester, it was music theory, and I personally didn't get enough. So today, I'm going to be summarizing all of our philosophers using chords. So that way, the next time you need to write a poem about empiricism, you'll know exactly what chords to use to embody it. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll thank me later. The first philosopher was Socrates, and he was the root of philosophy, so to speak. He believed that truth and virtue go together, which for us is a pretty simple idea, so I just gave him a nice A5 chord. Next up is Plato, who said that identities were real entities and attached significance to it, which kind of mixed idealism with realism. So he gets a major third. Then after that was Aristotle, who went to Plato's academy. He didn't really like the whole mixing idealism with realism and um, becoming versus being, so he made two types of being and, f and then changed becoming to change. Um, but overall was just building off of Aristotle and Plato, so I gave him the third and fifth, which make a chord. Next is Augustine. He was the first true Christian philosopher. He said, I err, therefore I am, trying to combat skeptics. And he was a fir firm creationist believer and free, bleh, firm creationist believer and free will believer. Um, and for being the first Christian philosopher, I gave him a Jesus chord. <laughs> Next up was Augustine, who um, a lot of people say kind of just plagiarized off of, or it's not Augustine, Aquinas. They said kind of just plagiarized off of Augustine, but he did distinguish a lot of stuff like grace versus truth and beauty as Lola talked about. So I gave them a finger pick to Jesus chord, just to add a bit to, more to it. Then came Descartes. He liked to link everything with this contradictory opposite, saying that if it didn't have a contradiction, it was absolute truth. But he also created math, so he gets the tritone. After that is Locke. Um, he divided ideas into simple and complex things. So basically, the best way to describe that musically is to play a chord. You can hear it, see the frets I use, that this is a mandolin, yada yada. Those are simple ideas. But then you can build off of that into complex ideas, such as this is a G minor chord, specifically played root, fifth, third, root. That's simple versus complex. After that was David Hume, who was the questioned everything. He was the first skeptic and like then tried to simplify the mind into impressions and ideas. Overall, he didn't really like anybody, so I just gave him a nice inquisitive. <laughs> After that was Immanuel Kant, and he tried to disprove God's existence, but very badly. He said for the ontological argument that existence is not, or sorry, for the cosmological argument that just because God can exist doesn't mean he will exist. It's not the predicate. For cosmological, he said, or ontological, he said that if cosmological was flawed, so was ontological. And for teleological, he said he agreed with everything, but because ontological was flawed, it had to make teleological flawed. So overall, his ideas were kind of diminished, so I gave them a D diminished, or C diminished. After that is Marx. He, his father converted to Lutheranism just for working environments, which made him really question the idea of religion, and he said that God could only be found in history. He believed that capitalism just separated the owners from the workers, so he tried to make communism where everyone was middle class, yay, or whatever, but it didn't really work out that great, so he just gets whatever that is. After that came Kierkegaard. He tried the three stages of life, First, the emotional state, where you're just going after passions and ideas. And then, after an existential crisis, you move on to the material state, where you have some ethics. And after uh, the religious idea, you enter the religious state, where you just obey God out of passion and love. Overall, he can be summed up with a D-sus chord, which is G-A-D, or G-A-D. Just barely God, but a bit off. <laughs> After, then next was the opposite of Kierkegaard, or for my music nerds, the negative harmony, and that was Nietzsche. He believed God is dead, and we killed him. So basically, God alive, God dead. After that was Sartre. He said that existence precedes essence as the main dictum. As Christians, we believe that essence makes existence because God thought of us before he made us, and Sartre just went no. It's basically like, instead of playing a chord because you know that'll fit the song, just playing something and then trying to figure out what it is later. 
After that was Darwin, who was like a kind of honorary mention to philosophers. Even though he wasn't quite a philosopher, his ideas of evolution certainly shaped the world we think of today. He, you, he thought of, he um, based his ideas off of real principles, that of microevolution, but then kind of just extrapolated the frost to make a, a kind of kind of bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> then was Freud. He was the father of um, social, social analysis, I think. And um, he basically just said that as we gained reason, we went from everything being a god to some things being a god to one main god to only one god and now nothing at all. Um, and so in conclusion, we have Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Augustine, Aquinas, uh, Descartes, um, Hume, Locke, Kant, Marx, Kierkegaard, Nietzsche, Sartre, Darwin, and Freud. Thank you. That was so fun. Can you put words to